My early life. Your early years. So yeah. you were exposed to art at a very young age. I think that's key, don't you think? Yes. The exposure and being mm -hmm. being saturating yourself in that kind of environment that really lit your fire early yeah. on. Especially that Milwaukee Art Institute of Art. Mm -hmm. That was the best. Okay, then um, I got married in 1955, and, and then I had three daughters after that. And then, um, but when I was 62 years old, I got serious about art. Okay. Because my kids were all growing up, and they all graduated college, and I, we were sitting home alone, my husband and I. We were living in New Mexico at the time when I started getting serious about art. We lived in New Mexico for 40 years. Barbara, can I, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you're really flying through this. <laughs> oh. And we have questions. So, how long have you been married to Charles? 68 years. 68 years. That deserves an applause. Okay. The, I know this for a fact because you and I have chatted. And I want you to tell everyone how you and Charles met. Oh, we met at the Eagles Ballroom. And that is still there. And that is still there, there in Milwaukee. On uh, Wisconsin Avenue, I think it is. Yes. Yeah. And Charles is an excellent dancer. So it was, it, was, it was a dance hall? Was it a dance hall? Yes, beautiful. Wow. It had a crystal chandelier in the middle of the ceiling. Okay. And it had a balcony all around it that you could sit at and look down at the dancers. It was just lovely. Okay. Yeah. So can you share some key things on what's your secret to a long and healthy marriage? And Charles, you can chime in too. <laughs> You want to go first? Uh, well, she let me go golfing three times a week. Wow! <laughs> nice! That was only in New Mexico all year round. You could do that here. Nice. What's your secret? What, 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 I, what's a, a helpful tip you can give us helpful to, a help, to a healthy marriage? I think the important thing is if the people have the same interests, mm -hmm. that means a lot. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things. <clears throat> And another one is to have patience with them. <laughs> we're not perfect, and I'm talking about myself. <laughs> yeah, so we need to overcome our grievances yeah. because they're just little things. That's wonderful, and that's mm -hmm. those are all great tips. Yeah. 68 years, wow. Yeah. And you, you said that the, one of the things is doing stuff that you enjoy together, and traveling. Traveling yeah. is something you two enjoy doing together. And I know for a fact that traveling helped inspire some of your art pieces. That's right. Huh? Yes. So I think that's a great segue into um, talking about some of your pieces from around the world. Mm -hmm. I know that your vision is really limited, but after the interview, you'll be able to walk around and take a closer look at these pieces. So Barbara, do you want to start with the very first one on the far left, and you right. just walk us through it? Okay. That all those uh, seven paintings on that table next to the window, they're all about the seven countries that we visited that I made paintings of. We really visited 16 countries, but these are only seven. Okay. And uh, I'll start with the last one on the left. That is Barcelona, Spain, and it's uh, a watercolor. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is going to show you the difference between watercolor and acrylic because the next two are of a city called St. Paul de France in France. And the first one is a watercolor. It has people walking up the st steps on a street in St. Paul de France. And the next one is uh, a private home with a fountain. And that's also sad, but that's acrylic. Okay. So you can see the difference if you look close at it. And the next one after that is Venice, Italy. That was really exciting. They have no cars in Venice, no motorcycles, mm -hmm. no buses, nothing. You have to take a gondola to go to any place you go to. And when we got on our gondola, I took the photograph while I was sitting here of that scene, and uh, two young Italian men came in our gondola. One was carrying a uh, accordion. And then when we started going down the Grand Canal, he started singing. Italian opera songs. It was just beautiful. <laughs> just like in the movies. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then the next one is uh, Thailand, which is uh, Sarah's favorite. That's and my home a, country, yes, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's your home country. And that, that is a lady that's making a, a bamboo flute. She's, the bamboo is hollow, 
so you can make it into an instrument. And she's making that, they, they sell them or they just use it for themselves. And the last one on the right is Egypt. Is Cairo, Egypt. That's the first place we went to on our travels around for 25 years. Anyway, um, that is a man coming down the, st the most busy street in Cairo, Egypt, with 10,000 cars all around. And he comes down there with his camel. <laughs> and try to beat the traffic. I thought, you're going to get run over. I took a, a picture from the bus that I was in, and uh, that I, I painted the picture from okay. the, the photographs. Okay. Yeah, that's so what I do a lot. Do you, is that how you mostly paint? You take your um, object from a, a still photo, and then yeah. you paint from yeah, it? Yeah, okay. right. I also like to take photography a lot, so I have a lot of photos that I paint from. Okay. So okay. how many countries are represented? You have Spain, France, Italy. We missed one. Yeah. Um, the one, in, one, two, three, four, fifth one in is from a city in Mexico. And Charles is helping produce this program <laughs> because he suggested I show you the name of this city. Spell it out. It's spell O A X A. C O. Oh, I hear some mumbling. So, how would you how would you pronounce this? Let me pick on someone. Alan, how would you pronounce this? I, I can't see it. I got to put my eyes on. Try to show it to them. It's O Say it loud, louder. O Okay, Charles, do you want to tell them how it's pronounced? Stand up. Oaxaca. Oaxaca. Oaxaca, Mexico. And that's the hotel we stayed at. That was a little trivia Charles wanted to challenge the audience. It's one of the biggest cities in Mexico. Yeah. It had a lot of archaeological ruins. Yeah. Like they're a couple thousand years old. Yeah. And they're still there because I'm interested in archaeology also. Okay. But um, Oaxaca is a, a special kind of a culture. That's where this uh, man named, what was his name? Uh, the guy named Juarez, Benito Juarez. They named a city after him near El Paso, Texas. It's called Juarez. Mm -hmm. And uh, his name was Benito Juarez, and he was Indian. Mm -hmm. And um, he became president of Mexico. Okay. He was from that town. Okay. Yeah. I just enjoy my conversation with Barbara and Charles because how many years did you? They have. A, they're a wealth of knowledge about the southwest part of our country. You lived there how many years? I lived in New Mexico with Charles for forty years. Wow. Yeah. Longer than you lived in Wisconsin. Yeah. Up wow. to that point. Yeah. So now Barbara <laughs> and Barbara and Charles moved back. It's been about. Seven months. Seven months uh -huh. from New Mexico. And I would say they're settling well here at Shore Haven. Yeah. So I, I, like I said, I enjoy our conversation about that part of the country because you're a wealth of knowledge. So that's a good transition into... Um, the next country. Yeah, so I featured three of her masterpiece back here as a backdrop. I would say these are, are outstanding pieces. And um, one is from her travel. That's why I didn't have Egypt over where, there where, um, where you travel because we wanted to feature it back here. Would you like to talk about this piece back that, behind you? That Egyptian piece? That is a, taken from a photograph I took when I was inside the tomb of a famous pharaoh of Egypt. I can't remember his name. And that painting is probably like something like 3,400 years old. Is it the Valley of the King? Was it, it King Tut? Yes, yeah, okay. it was right next to King Tut's. They didn't know that at the time until they just recently found King Tut's uh, tomb uh, in 1927 or something like that. Okay. Anyway, um, they dug up this other famous pharaoh's tomb, and when they dug it up, because they're, they're all underground, all these tombs, and they have long corridors that go down and paintings on the wall. So I took a picture of this painting, and then I painted my own painting, but the pictures that they took of, um, uh, they told us recently that the reason they found that King Tut's tomb is because the tomb that was just a few yards away from his tomb was dug up and then they put all the dirt on the area where King Tut was buried. They didn't know what they were doing. And they, then they, have to, they just left it like that, you know. 
until 1927 or something, when this guy named Carter, he went there with an archaeological team, and he, he discovered it. And King Tut is really called, the pharaoh name is Tut al Kamun, whichever that means. <laughs> something about Amun is the sun. Yeah. Yeah. He was like the pharaoh, the king of the sun, or he was the son of the sun. You know. So Tut is just a short name. Yeah. He has a longer King name. Tut, yeah. Yeah. He, so that's your Egyptian travel. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this piece oh. is titled Self Portrait Dancing in Mountains and Holding Up the Moon. That's really me, you know? Can't you tell the resemblance? <laughs> that's a self portrait. It's tell us beautiful. about that. Yeah, I started painting this and I thought, heck, I don't know what to name it besides uh, dancing in the mountains and holding up the moon. And I thought that would be kind of funny if I named it myself portraits, you know? <laughs> it's very artsy. I yeah. think it's a, a good reflection of, of who you are. Yeah, very very, like very colorful, very Yeah, cool. I yeah. like to dance, like Charles and I met at a dance. And so yeah. It's kind of uh, appropriate. Yeah. Yes, yes, I like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, New Mexico, you, you said that you're, you're inspired by your surroundings, by, by, by nature. And so there's quite a few um, pieces from New Mexico from when her and Charles lived in New Mexico. A good example is this beautiful sunset. Mm -hmm. And please tell us about that piece behind oh, yeah. you. This sunset painting is exactly what I see when I'm laying in my bed, getting up in the morning. I just turn my head this way, and there they are, the mountains. And every morning, the sun comes up in the mountains. The sun shines every day in New Mexico, except for five days of the year that's scattered throughout the year. It's not five days in a row. So uh, you get a good idea of how much sunshine we get. And uh, this is the sun coming up over the mountains in the east. Beautiful. And uh, I just turned, I can see that from my bed. Mm -hmm. And at uh, 4th of July, we could see the fireworks mm -hmm. from my bed, too. Okay. Yeah, because the city of Las Cruces, New Mexico, is right at the foot of those mountains. So uh, it's a, a place where you can have a backdrop. Mm -hmm. From In fact, one time for the 4th of July, they had a so-called spaceship mm -hmm. behind the mountains on the other side of the mountain. And it was coming up very slowly and everybody, nobody noticed it at first, but then they said, oh my gosh, it's a spaceship. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was just kind of a funny thing. Well, New Mexico is known for extraterrestrial. Oh, yes, yeah, northern New Mexico, that's right, yeah. Wow. I have okay, so Barbara, I'm going to keep moving into the different pieces that we have featured okay. here because we have lots to talk about. Let's start over here because we're in New Mexico now. Um, tell us about this piece, which is titled? The Gamble's Quail. And we had them in our backyard, like 50 of them. And it was so cute because... Uh, this, this guy looks like the head one, because every day in the summertime, especially when we'd be sitting outside in our backyard, we would see this guy standing on, on the top of our fence, and uh, we uh, heard him, he started calling all his friends and relatives, because they came in from all different directions, because they heard him calling, it was time to come home. And their home was in the, these two big pine trees we had on the side of our house, and that's where they lived. But they came from all different places miles away because they, well, they heard him and then they passed the word that this is time to go back now. Do they have a distinct um, sound to yes, their song? Yes, I can't imitate it, but okay. they do have a distinct Charles, sound. Charles, are you good at it? You want to give it a crack? <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll just we'll pass on it. on that. Okay. True or false, the quail is New Mexico's state bird. True yeah. or false? Uh-huh. Yeah, they have no, a... No one wants to guess? Charles? The roadrunner. The roadrunner. That was oh, yeah. a trick question. Oh. The yeah. roadrunner is the um, the state bird. The one... Can I show a picture of the your backyard since you're talking oh, yeah, about... Yeah, right, okay. yeah. So, what, did, what, did, what is this one titled? I, we don't have That's a tag on our, it. Our backyard. Sometimes. It's our backyard. <laughs> yeah. See, the, uh, this blue thing over here is representing what? 
this blue blue thing over here is representing the Rio Grande. Okay. But it, you can't see it from here, but I just put it in there just to remind people that's what that is, because we're near the Rio Grande. And then between the near Rio Grande and the mountains is the city of Las Cruces that we could see from our house. And at nighttime, it was so cute to see the all the lights of the city, and they were down below. We were up high on Mesa. So uh, it was kind of fun to sit back there. OK, Bar Barbara, there is another um, um, picture that you painted of your home. And this is the front of it, so I just wanted yeah. to bring. And you all, after her interview, you'll be able to walk around and take a look, a closer look at these paintings. Yeah. OK, so this is her, this is her in she, the, their house, Adobe. 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 And the adobe is a kind of architecture that they use in New Mexico, the Indians especially. They, the, the Indians have been living there for thousands of years, way before the Spaniards came. Anyway, they gave Spanish names to their each different pueblo. That's each different tribe, but in Spanish they say pueblo. Anyway, um, that tribe, uh, okay, they started with those adobe buildings, and now in the city of Las Cruces, the new homes they often build them with Adobe, because that's so traditional. The walls are 14 inches wide, thick wide. Because when they make these adobe bricks, they make them in a form. They mix up lots of mud with a little bit of straw, and that's how they make this adobe. And then they put it up on a roof, a flat roof, to let it dry. I don't know how long it takes, maybe a couple of weeks. And then they use those bricks to construct the house. So the walls of the house are, it's about, they're four inches thick but they're 14 inches wide and 10 inches high. And then they make the walls 14 inches wide on the outside walls. So, so does it, that make good insulation? Yeah, it does. Because does it get cold at night? Yeah, it does, it does. because we're up at 4,000 feet elevation. So that gets cold at night. It could be 95 degrees during the day in the summer, but then only when it's 95 degrees, the humidity is only like 12%, so you don't feel uncomfortable. You feel a little bit warm, but it's not uncomfortable. He could even golf in that kind of weather. And over here, if you have 85 degrees, you got 69% humidity. That's what we did like about the weather here, because I can't take that humidity. But then I found out another thing I can't take is the, foot, the feet, and we were at 4,000 feet elevation. We were living in the mountains, and um, I went to my doctor before we left to come here and asked him if it was okay if I moved him to, to Wisconsin. He said, oh, that'd be great. He said, because the average elevation for the state of Wisconsin is only 600 feet. So that's it. And ever since I came here, I don't need to use the oxygen machine. Oh, interesting. So that's a good yeah. thing, yeah. But that was another thing that I yeah. had a problem with, yeah. Okay, we're gonna keep moving on. This is a very special piece, and I wanted you to tell the audience your neighbors about this one. There's a Wisconsin tie to this. Yes. Okay. You heard of Georgia O'Keeffe? You have heard of, yes. She's from Wisconsin. Yes. And she went to New Mexico one time, and she loved it so much, she came back there and she built an adobe house. And she lived in this town where this church is. That's an adobe church. And uh, she lived nearby in the city of adobe, uh, uh, Abbey Q it's called. A-B-I-Q-U-I or something like that. Anyway. Um, I thought that church building, the architecture, yeah, I just love. Pretty. I love the oh, red in this color. It's yeah, very bold. Uh -huh. yeah. um, tell them about um, O'Keeffe's house. You you went there. Yeah, that's another thing. Her house, she died just about five years ago. She was almost 100 years old. Anyway, she's from Wisconsin. I forget the name of the town, Charles. Do you remember? Spring Green. Spring Green. Oh, oh Spring Green. It takes an yeah. artist to know one. You know? Yeah. It takes one to know one. OK, thank you. Anyway. Um, she decided she was to live there. She was married to Steingitz by that time, but he didn't want to go there. He was from New York City, and they don't want to go further west than that, <laughs> the New Yorkers. Anyway, she went there alone, and she built this house out of adobe, and we went to see it on the inside, and they had all the furniture she had in there, in the same place, all her furniture, and even her in her pantry, we could see all the stuff that she used to use, canned goods and stuff, and little spice boxes for spices, and her uh, mixer machine and everything. It was just, it was just like she was living there still, you know. And that was really nice. Now it's a museum. And they even have a separate museum of her paintings. It's called the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum, and that's in Santa Fe. So this Abbey Q place is like southwest of Santa Fe. 
Santa Fe is the northern part. And then north of that is Taos, New Mexico, that's near the Colorado border. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to move along to this piece here. And you know Barb as a painter, but she's also a potter. So there are a few pieces of her um, work up here. So I, I encourage you to come up afterwards. Um, this is a, it matches your blouse. Yeah. <laughs> I love the color of New Mexico or the desert. It's just so rich, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what I like. Um, yeah, I love color. very pretty. Yeah. It matches your top. <laughs> I know. So, and then. Um, I think that's real hard, that other one. Okay, you made this as well? Yeah, I made it on the potter's wheel. Okay, listen. And there's beads on the inside of the legs. Oh, wow. That is a copy of a Mimbras Indian piece. It's not my original design, but I wanted to have a copy of it. I wasn't going to pay $2,000. <laughs> they would charge me for that. But so that brings me to this piece. Look at this. Yeah, with the pottery. Mm -hmm. What is this one called, Barb? Uh, Indian, Pueblo Indian Women, Women Water Carriers in New Mexico. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that back or the culture, what, the, the, the water carrier. Do you know the history of that or the... Well, they, the they don't really have a history. They still do that. They, do, they yeah. still do that? They go down to the river because they don't have running water. They don't have electricity in their houses. But they're very comfortable because they have their fireplaces in the corner so that the heat from the fire goes and fans off to the whole room. In fact, we built our house out of adobe and we put our fireplace in the living room in the corner to it. And then it's also a raised hearth so that way the heat goes up and you get a better effect of it. But those people, um, Indian women, they've been doing that for hundreds and hundreds of years. They go down on the water to the river and they pick up, that water is so clean because they have hardly any pollution because there's very little in industry in that city, in the whole state of New Mexico. That's why nobody ever heard of it because <laughs> nobody knows about any industry that they would be famous for. But um, they had the beautiful landscapes and the mountains and stuff. But anyway, these people go down to the river and they fill up their water jugs with the water and then they put them on their heads and balance them back home. It's tricky. And they're wearing their traditional robes. So Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that I have not covered that you'd like to share? I'm admiring your um, piece of art um, around your neck right now. I know that oh, looks yeah. very New Mexico. Am I yeah, right that is, that's a This is called a the squash the blossom necklace. The Indians designed this. And the, the, this is called a nacho, the thing at the end, that's a copy of a Spanish thing. They would put something like this on the forehead of the horses, the special oh. horses of the parades, you know. And so the Indians adapted that, but these are squash blossoms, these little tiny things around the side. So this is called a squash blossom necklace. It's solid silver. And we'll tell a story about how we bought it. Charles was with me. We were in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is near Santa Fe and the northern part. Anyway, um, we looked at all their nice stuff. They were selling all this New Mexican jewelry and pottery and all kinds of good stuff. And I wanted to get a necklace like this before we went on the trip. And I, I, we went in there and I found this necklace. I really liked it a lot because most of them had the turquoise in it too. But I didn't want the turquoise. I just wanted silver. Anyway, um, we went in there and um, Charles told the guy that owns the place that we want to buy that necklace. It was like $125. That was like 50 years ago. So it's probably twice as much now. But anyway, um, he said to uh, Charles, what, how did that go? He asked you if you want to pay for it now or what? what? Well, no, I, I, I had, I said, I brought up my charge card, of course. I said, I want to pay with the charge card. Well, he did for like some that. reason, he didn't want to take the charge card. But he said, I'll take a check. Well, at this time, we were still living in Wisconsin and I didn't have any checks with me. So when we're sitting there, well, we can't, we don't have anything to pay for it yet. And uh, well, so they called the proprietor over and told him the story. And uh, I guess he was contemplating what to do and then, you know, Barbara said, oh, I really want this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Barb wants, Barb gets, right? <laughs> Anyway, well, I said, well, we can't pay for it. And so this guy said, well, where are you from? Yeah. 
And I said, well, we're from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then he said, well, uh, I've known some people from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, why don't you take this necklace home with you? And I'll, when you get home, I'll send you a voucher and you can pay for it. Can you imagine that? I walked out of the store with this necklace, didn't pay a dime for it. <laughs> It's not but if he would have said that we're from Chicago or something, he probably yeah. wouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you you know. look like trustworthy faces, yeah. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. they <laughs> so that, that's a, a really interesting story behind that necklace. Yeah. So thanks yeah. for sharing. So we have one more piece. I didn't want to miss this one, Barbara. Oh, that one is a prize. That one won a ribbon. Okay. It's called Power. Power. Like power, like horsepower. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a watercolor, and it depicts the special kind of horses that they have in the south of France, which are called, I forget what their name is, but anyway, they live in the south of France near in the Camargue, which is a swampy area right next to the Mediterranean Sea. It's on the coast of the Mediterranean. And uh, there's lots of gypsies who live there. They've been living there for hundreds of years. Anyway, the gypsies took it upon themselves to uh, adopt these horses and to protect them from extinction. So they took, took it out on their responsibility. These horses are a little bit smaller than a regular horse, by the way. And they're always white, but when they're born they're tan, then they turn to white. Anyway, um, the gypsies that are taking care of them, they call themselves cowboys. Well, you know, they dress up like a cowboy, they have cowboy hats on and boots and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, the name that they call themselves is not cowboys, it's called guardians. So they're the guardians of, the, of those horses. And uh, we saw the horses right there in the field while we were there. It was, they were really pretty, they're all white. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking us around the world. And I could see you are an appreciator of nature and of the beauty of your surroundings. And, and you had said that that's what inspires you. And so thank you for sharing that piece of you with us. Um, is there any other highlights that you, you you can think of that you want to share? I know you belong to some society, um, oh, painter yeah. society, or were there any um, awards um, that you won? Is this your first exhibition, or have you no, had others? No, I've okay. had many exhibitions, okay. and I've gotten awards and ribbons okay. and stuff like that. In fact, uh, that watercolor there has my typical uh, signature. My mentor, who I have, um, he's from Clinton, Texas, and he came over to Las Cruces several times and gave workshops, and I adopted him as my mentor. He taught us a lot about art, what's mm -hmm. good art and what's not good art, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he told us that we should go to uh, these places and uh, paint them in a different way. That's why that, that painting of the backyard is kind of modernistic or whatever you want to call it, because he says, you don't want to paint it like photographs and make it look like a photograph. You want to look like a piece of art, your own inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then I, I um, what was I gonna say uh, about that? Um, oh yeah, in fact, then he told me that I should not put my full name as my signature because most people don't like women artists. Mm. They think they're not good enough, just like they won't accept women doctors either. My granddaughter is a woman doctor. She lives here in Delaphone. And she can she gets scolded by these men. They won't have her to you. It's just terrible. That's she sad. graduated at the top of her class. Anyways, I have uh, my signature now is how H O W E comma and then I have a capital N M W S. That stands for New Mexico Watercolor Society, <laughs> which is a very stringent society. They are headquartered in Albuquerque, and we're the southern branch. And uh, they had competitions that I was in too with that Albuquerque thing. But that, and I noticed one time I came here to visit my kids in the summertime, and we went to some art show in the neighborhood, and uh, there was one lady that was a watercolorist, and on her painting she had her name, and just like I did, and then she had. And no, she had WWS. Guess what that stands for? WWS. Wisconsin Watercolor Society. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do that all over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was nice because we learned from each other. That's very helpful. We would have demonstrations and stuff and learn a lot about art. 
did we pretty much cover everything that you can think yes, of at uh -huh. the moment? Yeah. Um, I know that the audience, they're going to have some questions for you. Is that okay if we take oh, a few sure. minutes for questions? Very um, good. So, yeah, this is your time to ask Barbara Howe, artist, a store near, any questions? Go ahead. Alan, is it? Alan, go ahead. It's not a question, it's oh. a verification. She's a true craftsman. And why is that? Well, if you look at her pottery, it has a foot. And there's many, many potters in Wisconsin. And they're showing every summer over at the park here yeah. in Oconomowoc. And if you check them, you will find that their pottery does not have oh, yeah. a foot. But a true craftsman who is true to the essence of what a pottery is, has a foot. And that's the first thing I looked at. <laughs> She's got, it by or anybody who is into it, uh, <coughs> verification. Yeah. You have Very Alan's important. endorsement. Yes. No, it's okay. not Alan's endorsement. <laughs> it's the craftsman, yes. which is lost, yes. being yeah. lost. In WWS. Okay. Well, that's just watercolor. I don't Thank think that's being that. lost. I know, but being lost in Wisconsin. Oh, in Wisconsin? Oh, yeah. yeah. I just saw that one time, so I don't know. Because maybe it's because they have more artists, and lots more artists in New Mexico than they have here or anywhere else, especially in Santa Fe. Because artists are attracted to that state because it's so beautiful, the landscapes mm -hmm. and the mountains and the architecture, adobe and everything, so maybe that's why they keep it up because it's still going on big strong. That's what people come from all over the world to Santa Fe, New Mexico to buy art. Okay. It's like the best selling art art uh, city in the world. Used to be New York City, now it's Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I like to go up there because I get ideas <laughs> for my own painting, you know, to see it, because they always have, and they have a Georgia O'Keeffe Museum there too, with her, all her paintings. Yeah. Barbara, looks like there's another question towards the back of the room. Do you mind taking one more question? No, I don't care. I, Go ahead. The question I had, in the beginning of your talk, you mentioned fairy tales. Yes. Are there fairy tales in Wisconsin? Yes. Are you talking about her Egyptian artwork? Uh-huh. In the beginning, the, 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 block, the sand blocks the pharaohs. I don't know. I think you know, she knows that. Like, what's it? I don't know how they were made. Blocks of okay. sand. You, okay, you were at the ruins, the Egyptian ruins. Yeah. To the pyramids. Oh, yeah. She's just curious, like, if they talked at all about how it was made. Was it hollow, or was it... Filled with, you want to know if it was sand. filled with sand? Do, would you know that? No, the inside is empty and they have corridors as you walk down, and there's many rooms, up to 25 rooms for each pharaoh, according to how important you are. Anyway, it was all sealed off so that the rooms stayed the same, and that's why that painting has not faded because it hasn't been exposed to the sunshine and so forth. So but, the pyramids uh, are above the ground, but the tombs are actually underneath. Yeah. I don't know too much. I did go to the King Tut um, exhibition last month. It was very interesting. It's kind of claustrophobic for some people because yeah. it's yeah. all underground, no windows, you know. But uh, another thing is that the, the Egyptians uh, are, are such great builders. When they built these things so long ago, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think they would have that kind of technology. I know. In the fact, today, you could not build one like that. Absolutely, because about 10, 15 years ago, the Japanese engineers decided they were gonna try to build one, a pyramid like the one that's in Egypt, only one-tenth the size. So they got a little bit started, they went up and up a little bit, they didn't even get halfway. They said, we can't do this. Yeah. Because the thing is not empty inside, it's not just like a big hole. It's got these tubes in there, it's also got Another place that's outside window is it's just an opening that you could hardly notice, but that's where they get the air in, because you gotta have air if you're gonna visit there. 
And um, they have another a hole in the wall that points to the star Sirius. They're, they apply that. These people that lived in Egypt in those days were like aliens from another planet because they, they had this technology so advanced. But that's what they told us about. Those Japanese, they couldn't replace it. Yeah. It's one of those wor marvel that we yeah. just kind of go, hmm, I wonder. One of the seven wonders of the world. Wonders yeah. of the world. Yeah. Do you have any other question pertaining to Barbara's painting or her artwork? If Mary? not, if not, we'll conclude because I would like to allow you time so you can um, admire them closer so you can walk around. And Claudia and I are going to offer cookies and lemonade while you do that. But Barbara, this has been a pleasure, a pleasure. And she's not going to go anywhere, so if you'd like to come up after we conclude and ask her additional questions or just visit with her, like I said, come on up here and look at the um, art pieces a little bit closer. You're welcome to do that. She's kind enough to allow us to leave this up overnight. So Sam, if, if anybody from um, your side of Shorehaven would like to do an art walk, you, you can bring them over and just admire her work. Well, All right, so all right. thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate your taking your time to see. I hope you enjoy it and get a lot out of it so that you can remember art in a better way more so.